Hello everyone, welcome back to some more MRL Racing. We are joined back in the beautiful of Barcelona, Catalonia in Tier 3 Spanish Grand Prix. I'm here joined with the best man ever, Domi. Hello there. Hello guys, hello, how are you guys doing? Uh, are you guys excited for this amazing race we're going to have today? Uh, hopefully we're going to see some good action in Barcelona with his 16 corners. So it's going to be exciting for sure. Well, we definitely saw a lot of action uh, in the last couple of races, the American Tier 2 and the uh, Tier 4 races. Let's take a look at the track, shall we? We have uh, the Catalonia-Spain track, 16 corners, 16 turns, and two DRS zones. A very fast corner, a uh, very fast track, as well as a lot of corners to uh, navigate through. It's a very difficult one to with the, with the tire strategy as well. M most people are trying to opt in for the medium to softs, or medium hards, or even soft mediums or soft hards. That's definitely going to be an interesting aspect to look at in this track. What do you think, Domi? Yeah, for sure. Um, tire is going to be a big thing. As we've seen in the past, uh, batter strategy can get you a win. But uh, as we've seen in uh, America's Tier 2, that rain can come any time. So, so who knows? So you got to watch out for, for everything, basically, here. Uh, it's pretty easy, I think, to overtake on this track if you can get a good exit from the last corner, or like turn 15. Because if you stay close, that straight is pretty long. So you got to watch out for ERS management, I think. But uh, yeah, tire strategy is going to be for sure exciting for uh, this one. That will be an aspect to look at. But here we are looking at the standings of Tier 3. Crampy right now with a dominant lead in the championship. And he could probably have a chance to win the championship in this race. If he uh, performs well, keeps everything right like he's done in a couple races before, he will most likely win the championship today. Yeah, he needs, I think, 75 points to be clear ahead Carbon Racer because we have uh, four races left with this one. So if he finishes front of Carbon Racer, I think he already clinched the driver's uh, championship. And uh, Williams is looking pretty good in uh, constructor championship as well. So Yes, sir. The uh, Crampy is definitely looking really good for the championship right now. But the constructor championship battle is looking amazing right now with Williams and Mercedes keeping it tight, tight. Uh, if Carbon Racer and Macan can perform, uh, perform for the last four races, then I can definitely see them trying to clinch the the constructor championship. But Crampy and EDU have been performing very well lately, so I won't be surprised if they do uh, take home the the driver championship and the constructor championship. Yeah, but you never count out the Mercedes duo of Maka and Carbon Racer. As we've seen in the past, they have really good teamwork, as they've shown us in, in France with the toes. But unfortunately, Carbon Racer didn't have the best race. But you never count them out here. And uh, this check is going to be interesting for, I think, uh, we have a couple of Spanish people on our grid. Mostly, I think, Artex. And uh, I'm not sure who else is Spanish, but I know he is. So I think they sure want to take a good, uh, good race here at his home track, at their home track. We have Artex and I believe Jose Manuel as well driving for the Ferrari. He's I believe he's Spanish as well. So we have a few um, drivers fighting for their in their home race. So hopefully they're looking to uh, do a good performance as well as Jose Manuel. He is Spanish driver. So and he's he has been performing very well, especially in the front. He's been hitting the strategy very nicely. So I can't and especially today. Uh, the strategies for the tires are uh, a make or break. Uh, there's probably a high chance of safety cars because we've seen that in the past couple races in Tier 4 in America Tier 2. Uh, safety yeah. car is highly likely. Yeah, and uh, you can always get a good over or undercut with, with the safety car, you know. But uh, I think we are slowly getting all of our drivers in because I see a couple of people running up now. Yeah, so I think we're soon going to be uh, there in qualifying and we will see the weather report and all of the things we need to know about the track. Yeah, we are now readying up, so that's, that's good to know. That's all good. Everything is in time, is in order. We are starting soon to head into the beautiful land of Spain. Um, so what times are you looking at here? We've definitely seen some good times with Tier 4, but... Uh, for tier three, the pace has been really close to even tier two, even. But tier three, pay, uh, tier three quality pace with Crampy and Carbon, they're really fast. Yeah, they are always close to close to front uh, top of tier two, even. So I'm expecting around fifty nine or sixteen lows probably 
I'm not sure if they want to go on mediums because if they go on mediums, that's going to probably a little bit slower, but not by much, I guess, because uh, soft's quite overheated at the end of the lap as I as I tried it out today by myself because you know I have a race tomorrow as well with you, Mister Psycho. Of course, of course, I'm definitely practicing, getting ready for that race as well. But uh, we are getting the drivers in. We definitely seen um, uh, soft tires as well. Uh, people starting on the soft tires and working out. But safety car will most likely ruin everything. So I believe maybe starting on the softs is the, the best choice. But we are here in Spain. Skies are looking a bit grimy, but looks like it's dry for now. If we can have maybe some of the engineers that are in chat tell us the weather report, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think it's gonna stay dry for, for qualifying. But I already see a couple of medium runners going out. Um, I think mediums is a better trier if you can qualify yourself high position because you want to go long, you want to protect the tires because that's going to fail after two or three laps, honestly, as we as we have the experience with these kind of tracks. And we have a car already going out. It's a Ferrari, I think, and it's uh, it's Pookie. Pookie. Right. Uh, it's Jose well, Manuel, then... the Spanish driver, going out first in his home track. So that's a, a nice sight to see there. Yeah, getting the TV time. Of course, of course, and we will follow him through the first lap of uh, Barcelona. I think Navi is through this corner starting his outlap. So, starting out on the medium tires, uh, we have some drivers, uh, I believe, gonna start coming out on the medium drivers. I think his teammate will also run on the medium tires, but mainly everyone looking to put some times on the softs. Yeah, I, I think. Um... It's an interesting choice to go on medium because that means you already rule out the possibility that you're gonna do mediums at the end. But maybe he's just doing early stint here with mediums and then going out again on this medium set. I'm not sure about that. But it's gonna be interesting how how good of a lot he can put together with his Ferrari and his mediums. Right. And undercut undercut is important in this track. Um uh, if you start out on softs, you mainly play around lap 10, I believe, or lap 16, I believe so, around there. That's the range. Or if you start on the mediums, around lap 20 will be the max, the, the, like the range for the for the pit window. But we have here Jose Manuel starting in his first lap. Let's see if he can navigate turn one. Turn one is a pretty fast corner to navigate through. You can easily slip up, hit a curb, and spin off. Navigates that easily. Let's say oh, doesn't take much curbing, but he navigates that through easily. This turn, if you hit the, the, the lines right, you can definitely go flat out, but sometimes you might have to lift. If not, you'll lose all that speed. Jose Manuel, everything looking good for him now. Go slightly off white, yeah. but that's all good. Yeah, he's using all of the tracks, all of the curves. You can use a lot of exit curves here on this track because it's pretty flat. But some of the curves can be pretty deadly, like this one, or oh, it's coming up now. Yeah, you can see the overstep because it's a bank corner on the inside and you have to go over a bump in the middle to switch to bump. It's it's pretty awful, I think, from driver's perspective because you can lose the rear pretty easily. But so far, so good. Jose Manuel navigates that pretty good. And now he's entering the final sector. Oh, and he cleaves the curve and spins. That's what we're talking about. The the curves can be deadly here. And I think uh, Edu is coming through now to finish his lap. He's entering the final sequence of corners. The 14, 15, and now entering the 16th corner of this magnificent Spain track. And now he's gonna open his ears and to the line. It's a 117.007. It's, I think, a pretty fine lap. And Dark already beats that with a 116.893. Wow. That's the, the first lap times for the, for the medium runners, but the soft runners are definitely gonna start putting out the pace there. Um, we have Wisp coming in with the soft tire, and as well as Kenei Gikvan in the McLaren car saying a 16.5. Uh, definitely respectable lap time for the banker, but we will definitely see that lap time game being in the future. Yeah, for sure. As Maka goes P6 with a 117.6, and Karma Racer goes 116.8 third place, as Artex smashes the time board with a 116.2 by the Spaniard. I think he was he was practicing. I heard from him he practiced three weeks for this race, so he's, well, he's really excited. Let's see if that practice will translate into track because 
you say you can say all this stuff you can practice all the time you want but there's a lot of factors you need to take in with safety cars and the drivers around you and all these different factors that you have to put in but if he has a practice in and definitely i've been working with him in the past couple of days you can definitely get him up to speed with this track so i will not be surprised if he does deliver in today's race yeah, for sure, and his teammate now just rounding up the final corners in the, red, in the other Red Bull. We said Gabi Zoom, who is just crosses the line with a 118.3 and goes P8. Uh, I'm quite interested in the people who went already on a medium run, that they do want to go on a soft set or they want to try another medium run. It's going to be interesting for sure. There are six drivers out there right now that hasn't even set a lap time yet, and that driver including Crampy as well. Um, he is not in the pits, I think he he is in the middle of the lap, I believe. Uh, yeah, starting on the softs. So we'll follow him going through the last couple of corners left. This one you have to navigate a lot of speed, looking a bit shaky during the, going through those corners, but let's see if his other good. sector time can uh, benefit from that, as he I doesn't set a lap time. And he's gonna slow down. I think he's gonna. He wants to go on mediums. It can actually make sense that he's slow down, because uh, you can beat that on mediums, as we already seen by Carbon Racer. So, yeah, that's that's it's pretty smart decision by Crampy actually here. Crampy wants to follow what his heart does. He would definitely wants to take some risk, but as well, uh, with his championship lead, he might want to take things. Uh, safe choices for example for this uh, for this race you definitely don't want to lose any points to carbon racer check if you can put telemetry up they are asking uh -huh. chat. sorry about that this game is a bit weird every time i press on the numbers it just turns off things so <laughs> pressing numbers turning of things yeah i think uh grumpy is just gonna go back to a pit he's just practicing a little bit getting grips with the, the with the track I think uh, we can see that with a lot of people. I think back row is, is not on his full potential with his soft lap as well, so it's gonna be interesting for sure. This Artex coming out again on soft, so it's gonna be interesting for sure. That this, what does the Spaniard do? Because he already went a pretty banging soft lap, and I'm not sure that he can lead that for mediums, or maybe he can. As we as as well as Carbon Racer going out on softs in the ten. 10 minute 55 mark we're already going through those second runs right now as people are going out for their second run right now so crampy swiftly hopefully swiftly coming back to the pit setting that medium lap time and um do you think that's a smart choice to set two laps with uh whatever tire choice you pick because um tire wear well, is, uh, a, is a is an issue here in this track not on softs because softs is already a tire what you use a lot but mediums maybe they can, they, it's it will be fine with videos. And, but that four laps shot Jose Manuel done on his videos is a little bit too much, I think. I believe, yeah. But We're on board with EDU right now, Crampy's teammate. He's setting purple sector ones right now. He's on the soft tires. Hopefully, uh, being that 117, he's standing in P6, navigating through that tricky corner, taking nice and safely. As well as this fast right-hander, lifting a little bit, not to catch himself out, using as much track as possible. Some cars in front of him, uh, setting a purple sector two. He's getting a nice lap right now. Yeah, he's half a second up his lap. It's gonna be interesting if where he finishes with it. But uh, if he doesn't slow, that's for sure he's starting on soft, so that this we can we do that. Most drivers probably opting with the soft tires for their strategy. Do you think? Would you believe that soft hards or soft mediums, uh, what kind of strategy do you think will be most in play? I think with the softs you can go hard, so I don't think mediums can go to the end. As Edu goes P2 with a 116.2, that's pretty close to Artex, who is on a lap and who is already improving almost dancing the fir first sector. He's already getting that purple sector 1. We can see these drivers now, the track evolution is so high in this track, even if the sky is a bit grim and the track the temperature outside might be cold. Ooh, it goes a bit shaky during that turn, but track evolution is so important to qualifying. Getting that last uh, time in, getting those laps in early as possible, or late as possible. Yeah, it's so far, it's it's not a bad lap, but he made a couple of mistakes and he's still improving almost two times, so 
if he finishes that lap and he is still in a good improvement, I think he can he can get under 16s. The and Spanish it shows driver, how much he Spanish driver looking to get some good results in for his home race. He's probably uh, practiced a lot. He wants to show um, his commitment to his country or his his practice as he goes oh a 15.8. A, a sub 16, one of the first lap times we've seen in Emerald Racing so far. What a really good lap time. He smashes that leaderboard at the moment. That's a respectable lap time from Artsakh, so wow. But qualifying still not over yet. We still have 8 minutes left. We have most of the drivers coming in now. As well as. Emerald Racing goes P3 with a 116.2. The point twos are looking favorable right now. Everybody's hitting that spot. Crampy yeah, is going to start a lap soon as well. He's starting his lap right now. See what lap time he can get. But he's on the medium, so he's definitely going to uh, slow himself down with that. A lot of people opted for the softs at the end of this qualifying session. As, as you can see, the top five, I'm pretty sure they're not going to improve. And maybe even Gabi Zoom. And, yeah, Gabi Zoom, because that was on mediums. As Jean pops into P8. And that goes into P2, so... Yeah, most of the field is on softs already and I'm not sure if Krampi can do something about the soft runners because the tire data is pretty huge here, it's 1.2 seconds between the two tires. We have a uh, dark in the wall with no front wing at turn uh, turn 3 I believe, definitely a tricky corner if you hit the curves you can definitely spin off but going back to Krampi. I don't think he will set a respectable lap time with those medium tires, but he will definitely use that tire for a, for a, a strategy advantage. Yeah, his lap is not bad actually, because he's only two tenths down on his soft run, and he's slowed down on his, uh, his, his end of the lap, so we'll see how much it goes. And he had a pretty big moment in the final two corners, so it can be under maybe 16.5, I'm guessing. Most likely a 16 time, as you see, a 16.5. Yeah. Pretty respectable for a medium uh, medium time, to be honest. Yeah, if he can improve on it a little bit, maybe in the last few minutes, and put himself even further, that can be really good for him. Wow, that's that's a huge lap from him. Pretty good lap times, uh, same for Crampy, but he does have one more run with the softs. Hopefully he can make it out in this tricky circuit, and he needs to have the consistency, but I won't be surprised if he does. He's definitely shown... Uh, a lot of consistency in the past couple of races. As Cody comes through in the chat, um, that it's six tenths only between the tires, so I was wrong, I'm sorry about that. Six tenths delta between the tires? Yeah. That's pretty. So. It's not bad, but not good. So. The medium, runner, the medium tires are still looking really good if they are starting with the mediums. But most likely, uh, most of the drivers are going to start on softs. As we believe, I think yeah. his, his teammate is uh, EDU uh, starting his lap with uh, with the soft runners. We're going to go on board with him going through sector one, maybe uh, improving in this time. Puki goes to 15.8 with that Ferrari. Oh, Ferraris are doing really fine here. As I was about to say that Krampi and Puki is the only two people who is on mediums at the moment. Interesting. So def they definitely have the tire uh, strategy advantage right now. But EDU goes purple sector one, and I won't be surprised if any of the drivers as well go purple sector one as track evolution has evolved so high right now, as you can gain so many times, so much times in during the corners. Yeah, Pookie is on softs now actually. Only Krampi is on mediums in the top ten. It's gonna be interesting what tires he goes out again. As uh, our McLaren just started his lap and going towards the turn one, but we are on board with Edu. Edu. He was looking a bit squirrely with that track limits, but nonetheless getting that lap in right now. Let's see what time he sets up. Sets P3 behind Artex at 15.8. This 15 is just flying in at the moment. So close to get that P2 spot as well as that P1 spot. It's so close right now, but I won't be surprised if these lap times uh, will be beaten soon, but these lap times are so quick for this tier. Yeah, as in the last sector, uh, the Ferrari and the Red Bull are lining up for his for the laps, but I think Artex went too close to Jose Manuel. He's going to get uh, maybe a toe here, but he's going to get held up in, in the first sector. 
As, oh, and Jose Manuel lets them off. That's uh, a nice gift to give to Artex. Um, uh, they're both Maybe Spanish then. drivers, so... Ooh, going a bit squirrely during that current, but yeah, both Spanish drivers working together. He's matching his time so far, but, but he can improve in the next couple of sectors still. I, I believe he's working with a, a, a Spanish theme uh, helmet, to be honest. I see those, co those uh, red and yellow uh, colored helmet right there as well. I like to see the, the, the representation of their home. But we have Artex going through that corner, not invalidating and not spinning off as well. That's really good for him. Going through that last sector. He gets purple middle sector. Hopefully he can. Up. And hopefully Close he can be. Uh, hopefully he can be a sector three, and we'll get a very good lap time. And that's probably will be pull unless Cranty beats that out, or even Carbon Racer. Wow, Artex is really flying at the moment. Oh, but he gets close to invalidating. Wow, he's pushing the track limits as much as he can to get that lap time in. And a one fifteen point seven eight eight. He actually lost a tenth in his lap. But it's still pole position. That's still a really good lap time. 50.7 is a blistering quick. And we have all these drivers now still in his lap time. There's only 2 minutes 15 seconds left. And there's so many drivers that haven't done their laps. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen. We have Crampy on the soft right now. I believe he started his lap as well. As yeah, uh, a carbon racer and Maka. Maka as well starting his lap. But going through these turns, hopefully Crampy can use all the track available. He needs to focus now and get that pole time as this is very important for the championship. And as well as getting that sweet Euro prize, like money cash prize for him. Yeah, he's doing so good so far. Didn't make anything, any mistakes, I think, at the moment. And he's hitting every apex. But he, there is a little bit of traffic jam front of him, but they get out of the very nicely, thankfully. And he's improving by half a second almost. He was purple mill sector, but that was uh, taken away from my other driver. So I'm actually interested to see what lap he puts in. But everything's looking really good so far. Hopefully, he will definitely improve on this meet in that time. But the position and where he starts right now will be crucial for his championship. Yeah. Let's see what lap time is he finishing with. It's 115.8. That's P3. That's pretty good for him. It's almost control. So. And the Williams is there together, so they can work out something strategically. But Edu is just coming up his final lap. And if you, if you look at this grid, it's so close at the moment. The top four is under a tent to each other. That's really, really close between uh, the top four right now. As well as the top five if Mackin can prove his lap. But on board a Carbon Racer, I believe he aborted his lap. He was looking a bit squirrely going through the sector time, but I think he will either come to the pits and stick with P8 with the poor qualifying or go out with another lap, but the tire wear would definitely be there. Yeah, I'm not sure you can... As he goes for well, another man. lap, he's gonna def he's gonna risk a tire wear and go for another lap to get that qualifying position. It's pretty bold from him, as Edu goes put to the first sector so far. He's improving by half a tenth almost. The teammate hoping to be his teammate out, maybe assisting him to get the championship, but they're in their own fights right now for the qualifying position. I mean, we already saw this weekend the huge upset in the Williams for Latifi beating our George Asta in the qualifying, so might as well happen here. The energy perceives within the Williams team, so that'll be interesting to see if that happens. He's going he purple goes, middle sector he, as well. He's, he's putting he's a really good lap time right here, hopefully Getting through those sector three, uh, sector three, he's looking really good. The drive in front of him, but that's definitely not gonna hold him up. Keep that nice consistent. Oh. Ooh, doesn't validate, but he is definitely still up on his time. Oh, and he aborts the lap. Yeah, I think he knew at that moment that that he he threw away the time that he needed, and he just sits behind, don't stress the tires that much. As, uh, effort by him. Carbon Racer going to the last sector, he didn't set a good lapping time. He invalidates on the last turn! Oh no! Carbon Racer, oh. that is not good for him, especially in this battle. Maka beating Carbon Racer. Oh, and we have, I believe, Rackety as well. 
Still in his lap, I believe. Oh, he's going to pits now, and I believe that's every single driver done with the qualifying, and this is it. Top five looking really competitive, especially within the top four of Crampy EDU glued together. They're really, really close, but Spanish driver taking pole in his home country. What do you think, Domi? Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing, and our grid is looking really close today because if you look at the gap from leader to P16, who is our last driver at the moment, it's only a second. That's that's actually really close, and our top top four is under attempt even, so it's even more fast. So I don't know what happened with the tier, our clear three gear, but uh, they eat something for breakfast, but we don't know. As does is on an outlap for me, I think, but I'm not sure. It says he's on an outlap, but. I think it's just AI controlling his car. I think we're gonna have to wait that 40 seconds of uh, time remaining. So, but well, this gives him. us more time to discuss about this amazing qualifying we have. We have Artex, the Spanish driver, starting in P1. The other um, Spanish driver starting in P10. Not a good position to be at, but Wisp he is in a prime position. To, he can start in the mediums, and definitely if he wants to, if he if he's bold and wants to gamble, he can definitely pit for the softs and. Um, use a better uh, tire strategy. I think this is going to go for the hards to be honest because if you are out of the top 10 you wanna go for those hard, sweet hard tires because uh, it's it gives you a little bit of advantage over the rest of the pack. Obviously if you get an early safety car that's kind of the... I think Disaster is in a lap right now. And why, why yeah. is there this AI? Is this Lance Stroll, Yuki Tsunoda? Esteban Ocon has decided to join the playing field and decided, you know what? I'm interested in this race. I want to join in in this action. He's going to get blocked by this AI. This Almost is uh, like this is <laughs> this is very interesting. Let's see if this. I uh, think Stuart, Stuart is going to take a look at this one because I'm not sure if and he validates as well. But uh, <laughs> uh, will this qualifying session be over, or will we wait for? The amazing three drivers of Lance Stroll, Sonoda, and Alcon to set out and do a lap. I think we need to dash to finish his lap, or retire at least, or do something because we are waiting on him. Put on a show for us, you know. Just uh, take your time. He goes through in the pits. Yeah, and we'll honest, for him. he just shows what must have bugs again. Refresh as he retires, and our qualifying session is over. Okay. And that's it for qualifying session, hopefully. I, uh, I believe we won't have a lobby restart, so I'm glad for that. But yeah, we, we all need. know Codemasters, F1, this game is definitely esports ready. Yeah, for sure, for sure. As we've seen in the past, this game it just keeps getting better. Has a very good track record of um, yeah, but definitely no desyncs or any, any issues concerning that. Yeah, but at least our, our racers show us a good time, so... We are getting our money back for the game. Definitely. Because they give, put us a good show for on, on for us, if I could speak the English language. It would be quite funny if those uh, AI that popped out of nowhere just joined in for the fun. That would be funny if that came in all of a sudden. But hopefully the lobby will let me in through the race. I didn't get time to see the leaderboard, so that's unfortunate. But we, I do believe that pole driver is Artex. That is 100%. Um, is the Ferrari, yeah, the Ferrari driver. Uh, starting in P2 as well as was it EDU that was on P3 I believe and Crampy in P4. No, Crampy was P3 and EDU was P4. Right, yeah, yeah, they switch. Yes, yes. So Williams looking good for scoring some points. Um, Carbon Racer had a poor qualifying starting P9, but Maka is in P5, so uh, chances for points are still there for the Mercedes drivers. As we have 15 seconds, have we have all the cars lining up for the grid, ready to start their formation lap? Be interesting to see what kind of tire choices we have. Uh, most likely, um, uh, with starting uh, in P11, most likely going to be the medium uh, runners. But do you think we will see any hard runners? Well, we just have to see, I guess, on the starting grid. But um, let's see. Here we are. We have one hard runner in P14. Oh, that's actually interesting. Uh, as I don't have intervals or tires. No, I do have. Yes, and we have the the top five drivers: Artex, Pookie, Crampy, 
EDU and Maka, Artex being the Spanish driver, of course, he sets out to win this race. He's in the prime position for that. We have Maka and P5 driving for the Mercedes, hoping to score some points for the Constructor Championships. Kanae in for, the, uh, for P6, Dark and Ahaz for P7, Gion in the Alphatari P8, Carbon Racer P9, and Jose Manuel, the other Spanish driver, hopefully scoring some good points for his home race, and driving for the Ferrari, maybe assisting his teammate, but we'll see in the coming races. And the rest, other six drivers, we have uh, Wisp and uh, Disaster Doof driving for Alfa Romeo, Rackety and Haas. Uh, we have Gabesian for the other Red Bull. Starting the only uh, only driver starting in the hard, so that'll be interesting to watch him. Back row P15 and Sid at P16, the last driver uh, with the poor qualifying session. But we'll see as the drivers are starting uh, the formation lap and warming their tires up. Yeah, I love this uh, backseat because you can see all of the cars are just leaving. It's actually a fine look. All of these people trying to heat up those tires to get the best start as they can. And yeah, it's, it's going to be a big start for towards the first trade because uh, everyone is going to get that sweet, sweet position from each other. I hope the driver is going to be, be careful with each other and, and have a clean race. It's important not to overheat the tires, especially in this track. Uh, having overheating is an issue, so uh, hopefully these drivers have taken into consideration with their setups and as well as uh, not burning their tires during qualifying and formation lap. We have all the drivers right now lining up for the grids. There's a couple of people spinning in the background and this and macro was off track in the last sector. They did a little, uh, little practice before uh, going to the formation lap, a little, little battle simulation. But they're all lining up steadily now. We have the last uh, driver or back row coming in and Sid coming in as well. So. Everyone's lined up now. We're waiting for back row to set in, but that's all good. Now, one, two, three, four, five red lights, and the drivers are revving up, and away we go for the Spanish Grand Prix. Everyone's setting off nicely. Uh, hopefully, the Artex is getting a good start. He's actually pulling off away. Everyone's keeping it nice and tucked, but Dark overtakes Maka right now, and it looks like everyone's keeping it nice. Some people going side by side, and McLaren slightly off, but everyone's keeping it nice and tidy going side by side. Maka and uh, and uh, Kane Given are fighting right now for positions, but everything looks to be smooth sail. Some people are going uh, even three wide going through these corners, but everything's looking really good right now. Yeah, it's Dark losing out a lot of position because he touched. Kane actually turned one and lost a little bit of momentum as Fuzzy Manila throws it up toward, towards Drags inside and Carbon Racer is spun. Our championship contender is actually at the spin and I think he's supporting some damage as well. So Krampi is looking really good for the championship to take here in Spain. No visible damage. Oh, he goes. Oh, he's going to the wall. He catches it swiftly, but Carbon Racer he has that hot, the hot tires right now. He needs to keep it cool. Uh, if he has damage, he needs to pit now because you never know when the safety car is going to come out. Yeah, he needs that safety car for sure now. But uh, Artex already pulling away a lot as Rackety spins in the last sector as well. So we have already two people who spun. As Artex almost pulling out of the DRS, using a lot of battery. And and I think Artex is just trying to run away with it. As E2 is pretty close to Krampi's rear, but I don't think they're going to battle with each other. And everyone just getting into that into that train at the moment. As Artex already out of that second, Artex is pushing like a step right to get that Spanish victory. As Jose oh. Manuel has a spin, I think, as does a start as well. Maybe they come together. Or I'm not sure what happened there, but we have Dazza disaster is, going is, off. Yeah, he's he's definitely missing some body parts in that car. And Jose Manuel is uh, missing a front wing an end plate on, on the right side of his car, so that's not good for the Spaniard here. I mean, he might have to pit. Lap 2, and we already miss. have a lot of action. Gavison's really close right now with Rackety. Uh, He's missing an end plate as well, so maybe maybe Dazaster, Gavison and Jose Manila came together at turn 1. The only driver with starting on the hard runners, he is not looking good with the strategy. As well, he has a penalty. Um, Carbon Racer overtaking him, of course, but doesn't look like Carbon Racer have any damage. Still in, is in the fight, but he's probably hoping for a safety car to come out. Yeah, as Artex already pushing away for the rest of the pack, he's 
pushing really hard at the moment. He's, he went a second faster than Edu, who is in P4. So, wow. Artix is showing the pace he has at the moment. As we have a couple of people already pitting, I think they're serving the damages or changing the from things. The rest of them. Sorry about that, I was gonna say Artex is pushing a lot, he has that 50% ERS, using half of his battery already here, so early on these stages. Yeah, but if, if you see, Pookie has 60% and he's out of the seconds, so it was a successful use of his battery at the moment. And Crampy as well, trying to, his hardest to push, he is, he's also uh, on half of his battery, so it's a pretty common theme within these drivers to push early on with these tires. As Idu is out of DRS as well, but he has almost 90% battery, so I think he's just gonna utilize the battery to get back into the DRS. DRS is Ooh, activated. Uh, uh, Crampy, I believe, he doesn't want to really take team orders, he definitely wants to fight for that championship, as um, he, if he can stay in this position, you most likely win this championship in today's race. As Carbon Racer trying to overtake Brackety at the end of the back straight, and maybe he's trying to do it here in the last sector because there is a gap for Trotter Fib, but I think he's just gonna wait for the main straight but he can use the RS. It's definitely being sold down by Rakuti, which still have damage. I don't think he has pitted yet for those damages, I believe. Um, he is driving. Uh, sorry about that. Rakuti doesn't seem to have damage, but Carbon Racer just pulls out of the super stream and goes past the Haas drivers, so. Yeah, the soap's working better for, for the time being, I think. Well, Carbon Racer, hopefully to come back into the fight, he is long gone from that uh, from that train, from the um, P9 to P1 train. It's pretty close packed with those drivers. Hopefully hoping for a safety car, but if the safety car comes out right now, that will definitely change uh, everything for these medium runners. Yes, Idu lost DRS to Krampian. It doesn't seem like he can crawl back to under that second at the moment. As we have a spin in back row, I think, I'm pretty sure. Back row yeah, spinning in, in turn two. Hopefully not catching any of the drivers. Nope, leaving enough no. sp sufficient space for those drivers to pull through. But doesn't look like any damage on that car. Yeah, as uh, Uki is still in Artex, is DRS, so that's working out good for him. And Crampy is just keeping up with those two, but he is using a lot of battery. Idu is out of the DRS, and Anna is actually closing the gap with DRS to Idu. So we might see an overtake in the next couple of laps if Idu can do something to get back to the DRS. Kane is really close to Idu right now. He is getting closer and closer to that rear wing. So Kane showing very good performance, but Maka is still right behind Kane. So it's like a domino effect. Everyone's following each other. And this, uh, this uh, I believe EDU is just following the train right now as Crampy is slowly, slowly pulling off. Yeah, and I'm not sure if EDU can get back unless something happens because, as you know, DRS counts a lot on those two straights. It's around the 10th or 2 maybe in a lap. So I'm not sure if EDU can do something about it. But Kanai is really close to EDU's rear ring now. So we might see an overtake in the next couple of laps. That would be definitely interesting, and turn one will most likely be the, the choice of overtaking as DRS is so powerful on that straight. But as well as risky overtaking through that turn one, it's a kind of a tight corner, but if enough space need, uh, is left, it's definitely will leave us some, some uh, good racing. Yeah, as Kana is really close to Idu now, I think it's an overtaking opportunity if he utilizes that battery as he does now. And he's gonna open the DRS, and now we are going towards that turn one line, and he keep using the battery. Idu is not using anything, so I'm not sure Idu is trying to defend here. As can I going to go through in turn one? Idu can do, and as actually Idu trying to hang it around the outside, and he manages to. He keeps it right in front of Kane. This is beautiful racing. He broke late, sticked it through, left enough space for Kane, and he sticked it through. But I, this has definitely left him uh, open for some overtakes right now, as all the drivers are slowly creeping up to Kane. It's definitely lost time for both of these drivers, but. Uh, for the next lap, he doesn't have, uh, can I definitely use a lot of battery for that overtake? Yeah, but they still have similar battery levels, and can I is gonna use less because of the DRS is every lap. So I'm not sure how much can Idu get this defense up, but it was a nice defense from Idu in turn 1. 
You just see these drivers, the trains are so close right now, you never know. If one slip up, the train can just disperse, or the or the the person that's just slipping up. There's no mistakes needed here for this train. Yeah, as back pushing Mock almost through the corners, he's so close to that Mercedes back. I think someone is gonna make a move here. As Edu and Kanan already pits now, it's lap 7 only. I think they are going for those hards or maybe the 2 stop. Yeah, definitely for those hards, because if it was mediums, that's um, definitely not a right choice for this early pit stop, to be honest. They are doing. They are going for the mediums, actually. Or at least Kanai is going for the medium. I'm not sure what Edu does, but he does mediums as well. Edu so does go for the medium as well. So this is, uh, this is too early for the mediums, or unless they're going for the 2 stop. They're gonna try to undercut the leaders to get back into the DRS so they don't lose that much time. It's actually maybe a smart decision by them, but I'm not sure what the leaders thinking that they're gonna go on hards or mediums. Yeah, it would be definitely an uh, 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 interesting aspect to look at, but Maka, Dark and Gian, Maka's leading the train right now, so he's definitely prone for some overtakes. Yeah, he's, he's left one of the here, but um, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what the leaders react to that, because uh, Pookie is actually really close to Artex at the moment, he's only half a second behind, and I think Artex tires are going a little bit, and Pookie is going to challenge for the fleet if they don't do something soon. And Crampy as well, he's almost out of the DRS range, out That's of Pookie. Pitting. And Crampy is pitting as well as Gian is pitting as well, most likely for the, for the medium tires, because this is way too early, or the hard tires. Yeah, we'll see, I guess. Uh, Artex is down to single digits almost on his battery, and he's using everything to keep Puki behind at the moment. With Puki having 80% of ERS, he is definitely gonna catch up to, to Artex. Artex is definitely putting, uh, pressuring a lot with those with those tires. Uh, I don't think it's a smart choice to, to push uh, heavily unless he's gonna pit this lap. Yeah, and Crampy and, and John actually going on to the hearts as Idu pulled back to Crampy. He's almost under a second now, so it's actually burned out for the medium runners who just pit a lot earlier. But most likely the medium runners are going to have to pit again, or unless they're gambling for a safety car. Because I don't see mediums yeah. uh, lasting to the end of the race. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see if there is going to be some team runners in the Williams team, because they clearly on a different strategy at the moment. Definitely to have some team aspects, or... Uh, Hopefully, helping Crampy to fight off all the other drivers, but we'll see uh, with the race develop. We're on lap 8 out of 33. Uh, we have some gaps coming in now. We have uh, Pookie almost out of the DRS range with Artex. Yeah, I think uh, maybe Pookie made a mistake, but he's using the battery now to come back, and he still has almost 50% more than Artex. So, and Artex is down to single digits now. So. And dark pits for hearts, I think, for sure. Yeah, it's hard tires for dark. This is the last, last member to pit almost from Sots. I'm not sure if Artex and Pookie want to go that far, because uh, and there is a yellow flag that's a Red Bull, that's Gabby Zone. I just spin out of turn 9. Uh, it looks like he has damage that is going off the track. There's no visible damage on the car. No, there is missing a front plate. Uh, an end plate, so he's definitely gonna have to pay for those damages. That's uh, uh, an unfortunate race for the second driver, Red Bull. Yeah, as Idu almost pushing Crampy through the corners because of the tire difference here. They might gonna swap here anyway, that Crampy wants or not, because that premium is just faster at the moment. It would be smart if Crampy lets Idu pass so he can get that DRS and kind of fall him through. We have uh, Gabzium spinning into the pit lane. Wow, that's a lucky development from him, I guess, but that means Artex can pit. And now Pookie is going for that undercut. And we're gonna see how much they lost compared to the other hard runners. It's gonna be very interesting as Gabizum unfortunately retires the card in the pit lane. But it's gonna be interesting where Pookie comes out compared to the other hard runners, to Crampy and, and Edu, how much they lost. And it's definitely, gonna gonna get... see, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see what Artex, how Artex is gonna react to that. Is he gonna stay for couple more laps or is he gonna pit the next lap? We have Edu in the back of Crampy right now going for the overtake. He's not gonna fight Crampy's not gonna fight it much. Pretty smart decision from him. And now it's just set to um, see if he can lead Crampy on. But 
Idu is uh, right behind Puki. Yeah, Puki actually didn't lost the position to Krampi, and Krampi was a second behind, so those subs actually provided some good pace to them. But now Idu is really close to Puki and might might can overtake him and maybe help Krampi to catch back to the Ferrari and maybe make a move here. It will be definitely interesting to see if Artsex is going to pit this lap. We have uh, Carbon Racer, Maka and Artsex still out on the soft tires. They're going to have to come in soon for the mediums or the hards. He's uh, starting to making a group behind him at the moment. He's leading the train for those who have pitted. Or, Raki hasn't pitted yet, but he's definitely uh, on, on charge. Artsex does pit this lap. Uh, let's see Maka what kind is of going to follow he is. now. Maka is still staying out. He's going to... Probably most likely push out all the slap and go for the pits. Most likely gonna stay out. Maybe pit for the medium uh, medium tires. That would be a smart choice if he does that. Yes, Jacket is really really following up Puki now. Puki needs to make this move stick, but I'm not sure Rakit Rakit can do anything. Maybe even Idu is going to go through. And Artex is coming. Well, Artex actually get them wood. And Artex is on the mediums and Idu trying to go for a move in turn one, but has to back out because he knows that if he goes for that move, that's going to be a collision with Puki. And uh, Rackety just like that, losing two positions in one straight. Rackety, he is on those whole tires, and those mediums do die off pretty fast, but not that uh, fast as those soft tires. But he's definitely gonna get caught, Sean, with uh, with Crampy behind him on those new hard tires. As if you see, Artex is on medium tires actually here, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen here if he can go to the end. And Puki almost losing the lead and almost spinning. That leaves him vulnerable for Iju, and he's going to try to make a move here. I'm pretty sure because he doesn't have DRS and he's using everything now. He's going to try for to go to the inside, and he makes the move towards third time. What a move by Iju and using that Puki is having a moment in turn seven and eight. But Puki is right behind that rear wing. He's looking for the overtake during the main straight. Maybe it wasn't smart to to overtake him in that DRS zone because. As soon as Puki gets that DRS, it doesn't look like EDU does have um, DRS from Artex, so it might be an easy pass from Puki if he can utilize that battery, which I won't be surprised if he does, as he has 80% ERS. This Maka pitting for the new tires. Maka lost out a lot on baiting for those mediums here. He's dropping down towards 12th position. He's almost losing out to Jean as well. Puki doesn't go for the overtake. That didn't really utilize his battery. So I was a bit confused with that, but he is still staying tucked neat behind him. They have Rackety pretty close to Crampy, even though with those um, old medium tires, as well as Disaster right behind him. They both haven't pitted yet. So it's Wisp in P1. He's pretty. He has a pretty uh, far gap with the other medium runners, don't you think? Yeah, he has eight seconds, but Artex is getting held up by Carbon Racer at the moment, and the group is catching back to him. And if they manage to catch back to Artek, Carbon Racer here, Artex is gonna lose out a lot. But he makes the move towards third turn now, so he should be fine, I think. And he runs a little bit Carbon Racer out of track here. Carbon Racer, Racer needs, to come, right. needs to come in soon because those soft tires are going off so, so, so slowly. Uh, he will it's definitely actually, lose a lot of time if he does. It's actually huge for Idu because he gets DRS from that. That's really good for Idu right now, as Puki is still right behind him. But um, Idu with that 90% ERS, Crampy has only 14% ERS, so he's been pushing a lot with those hard tires. Yeah, Idu tried to go, go back to the DRS, uh, to, to get back to the DRS into Artex with his own DRS now. He didn't manage it so far, and Crampy is creating a huge strain behind him. Those hard tires are not working too well at the moment. He doesn't have much battery to use in that lap. There's no like, uh, there's no reserve energy for him to push. Uh, even if he doesn't use the overtake button, there's no battery for him to to go th to navigate through those corners. And this is backing disaster and Kane given up. Uh, they're just they're just really close to each other. They're only one tenth, and they're still really close going through corners. Maybe he might over go for the overtake if he utilizes his 70% of battery going to the DRS zone. And I think he's going to just do that. And he's going to send it towards on the inside towards turn 10. And they are now side by side. He's just trying to break later. But Kanai has a lot younger tires. But does is actually holding on at the moment. And what a difference from the Alfa Romeo. But this is allowing Dark right behind him to go 
uh, be really close as well as Maka. He's right behind him with the new medium tires. Carbon Racer comes out right behind uh, Gian, but he's only 30 seconds away from Gian, so we need to see some sort of safety car for him to actually come back and get those points for Mercedes. But can they give in and disaster? Both uh, still really close together. Can they with the new medium tires? He's hoping to go past disaster because he's stuck behind him right now. Yeah, he's losing actually a lot of time with Campy now. As well as Rackety. Um, he is also on those uh, old tires as well as Disaster, but they're really being close together. There's just a really close train with these drivers. Yeah, they are going hammer to toe now. As well as I'd like to take note that Pookie uh, is still behind EDU, even with those hard uh, hard tires. Yeah, I think he's going to stay that like a couple of laps, because uh, medium is still not fading, so I'm not surprised to be honest. EDU does have 30% not... and uh, Pookie with that 80%. Oh, this really this close with his drivers right now. As we have a As retirement from Jose Manuel, is this going to be a safety car? And it is a safety car. Carbon Racer is shaking in grace right now. He's happy to to see that yellow flag come on, but this is not and looking good for Artex. And just passing the pit lane. And oh, Artex no. pitting, Edu pitting, and Vist is going to pit. That's good for him because actually the safety car was not out yet, so the gap is going to stay the same because it's weird to a safety car for them at the moment. So Vist can pit to new tires. And this is going to be a net leader, I think. Or maybe P2 behind Puki and Maka. Wow. He, That's really good for this, actually. If he quickly rushes back into the pits, we'll, it'll be interesting to see what, where he will land. But uh, most he, likely... He's not going to lose... He's not going to lose position because it's still virtual safety car if you, if you look. Because he didn't get to the safety car. The safety car came out later than he crossed the pit lane. So that means the gap's still the same. At the moment, so this is going to win a huge year, a lot of positions. Do you think? Uh, no, I was gonna, I was gonna say if the softs could last, but that would definitely not happen, I believe. No, mediums could last from here, I think. I'm pretty sure. It could, because but he is on the medium, so he's gonna definitely have to pit to, for the hearts. Yeah, but if you look at the last, like, most of the people went for hearts. Only Krempy is on mediums, and Jean and Dark. And obviously the two Mercs, but they're not gonna pit, I think. The Mercs are high in position right now, Maka and Carbon Racer. Maka is in podium position right now, as well as Carbon Racer, he is in P6. So they're scoring really good points for Mercedes, but this race is still not over. EDU is in P5 and Krampy is in P9 with those new medium tires, which will assist him to go even further. I'm interested what uh, which is gonna... and Pookie pits as well. So I think this is going to be our nut leader, or maybe behind P2 Maka. Um, Pookie is, I think, going to go for mediums. Maka is going to pass him, though. That's the thing. Maka has yeah, passed he... him, so he... Isn't Maka the provisional leader right now? Yeah, but he has uh, three laps at medium there, so we don't know that can last to the end. And Art is losing out a lot here, actually. He's losing he lost that a lot. He's lost four positions. He was a provisional leader, and now he's lost so many positions with those hard tires. Yeah, wow. Well, what a wrench in his race at the moment. Jose Manuel leaves the election. It's probably not a good day for him as a Spanish driver retiring his own, on his home country race. But uh, Wisp gaining a huge amount of positions actually here. He became nine positions from the start with his strategy. And Safety car working out for him. Wow. So uh, when I, when the race started, I, t I told you that Wisp was in a prime position uh, for the strategy as he's in P11 with the medium tires, and he's kept that consistency, being the top meter runner, keeping a nice gap with the others. And this has definitely worked out with the safety car. He must be uh, jumping with joy right now. Yeah, as Krempy lost out a lot as Artax as well. So wow. Waiting for background sids uh, to catch up. It'll we'll probably not come in this lap. So we'll wait. And if my calculations are right, Krampy not winning the title with this position because Carbon Racer is P6 at the moment. And as well, Carbon Racer, he has only two lap old tires. Not that old, but I don't know if that those will last to the end. Krampy is on those new medium tires. 
But if Crampy doesn't perform well and Carbon does, this is definitely gonna affect his, his championship race. As we have some drivers going very slowly. The Artex, I don't know for some reason, went very slowly through the corner and slowed everyone down, but okay. slowly but surely catch everyone up. So at the moment, Crampy is not in championship winning uh, position for this race because Carbon Racer have to gain 3 points on Crampy on this race, so you have mathematical chance to the title still. Wow. Crampy definitely needs to perform if he wants to see that um that championship trophy by the end of this race i'm not sure what happened with artex and edu but they changed positions under the safety car i was just gonna i was just gonna mention that i was just gonna say if it wasn't artex in p5 so maybe yeah. edu might have spin and artex went through and tried to give the position back but that that quite didn't work out stewards are definitely gonna have a look at that yeah i'm not sure what happened there um, it's gonna be an interesting race for sure. I think a couple of people beat it for mediums actually. Back row so that's for mediums, so he's definitely holding the, the safety car. If he can swiftly come back, we might see the safety car come in this lap. Yeah, right now the drivers, the hard runners, are in the prime position. Wisp is on those hards, he couldn't pit for those mediums as he started for those mediums, so. Um, Maka is, is, is in P1, if he can stay out on the medium runners to the end, then uh, then he can definitely win this race, but I don't think so as all these drivers are on fresh tires, but it's going to be interesting to see what these how these drivers are going to perform with this safety car initially breaking everyone's strategy. Yeah, I'm sure Artex is going to push really hard to get back on those uh, podium positions for sure. As the safety car is still going around, I think, because the lights are still on. So, Seems yeah. Car going after another lap uh, because of back row painting for those new medium tires. Good strategy for him, but as well as good strategy for Maka, this can give him time to just, just not go that fast, you know, keep on his own pace and not warm up the tires that fast. Wow, this just is keep getting interesting by every lap. Unfortunately, the, the, the sun is pretty dry right now. There's no clear indication of rain. Um, well, I definitely can guarantee you that tier 2 tomorrow, there's definitely going to be some rain as there's been rain for the past all races. So be tuned for that as well. We have America tier 1, uh, 2 o'clock BST, and that's in the AM for the British viewers. Um, if you want to see more reaction, uh, more action with racing in Spain, we're not done. So make sure you stick around for that, as well as Misfits merch. And please, uh, please make sure to check out the shop. Uh, we got some really cool merch that you need to go check out. You can have your own customization, your own flag on. It's very cool. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. I have seen a couple of those clothes, and I want one to be honest. I want one, but, but um, I haven't, uh, don't have any money, so I'm, I'm gonna win the tier two championship, and then I'll buy one. So it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> Easy Hope your race is going to get better than your previous one because you are not looking too good in the championship so far. Yeah, but it's not anyway, looking too good, but we're back in this race. Safety car is coming into this lap, so these drivers need to get their tire temps up and ready. Maka will be leading the pace, so he needs to set the um, he needs to bunch everyone up, get everyone real close and tight together, and then get the nice launch off that off the safety car. Yeah, it's not already slowing back the grid. And this is looking that Mercy is rearing like it was a candy that he wants to take. So he's, he's going to go for it for sure at the restart. It's not going to keep backing the grid off. He's entering the final two corners. And he steps on the gas now. And and this is actually glued to that rear wing at the moment. As Pokey as well. And Artex got a little bit napping. And Pookie is closing the gap, and Maka and Wiss are still two times apart. I think Maka is going to definite position, so we're going to start. But Edu going side by side with Artex already. Oh, and Edu gets hit by Artex. Top from Artex going to Edu. This is definitely going to slow Carbon Racer down. But Carbon Racer is right behind Edu. He started from the back from the spin, and he's looking for the overtake right now, going side by side. Going to that corner if he can get the switch back, maybe. He's looking right there. If he can go for the dive right now, this might be the prime opportunity for Carbon Racer to go for the overtake against EDU. 
So going side by side, who gets the better exit? Carmen Racer in that medium tires, he gets the better exit. But we're going through the hard corner, is this much space left? There is space left, e Carmen Racer goes in front of EDU! Racing my dish to go through the hardest section on the track. Wow, a huge, huge heads up. And now, the top three is already Pookie pushing Wisps through the track because he has better tires for, for the Bowman being and Wisps is trying to defend everything he has. And Maka is just enjoying the free and is trying to pull away from the rest so he can create some gap, but Artex is closed up and he is now looking for the two Ferrari powered cars now. And Pookie is really close to the back of Wisps and now he's pulling out of that substrate and he's using the battery and I think he's going to go through. Wisps is not even defending that. And Artex is looking for this battery, Artex is using a battery, but I think he's not close enough at the moment. Maybe he's going to throw it to the inside, but no, I think he's better of it, or maybe not. Artex right behind him trying to follow him through, but that didn't happen. And this is allowing Maka to just pull front, almost out of the DRS range. This is looking really good from Mercedes, even uh, since we just saw from lap 1, they were looking really good, especially from Carbon Racer, but Carbon Racer is back in the fight. Some great racing yeah, and series that we're watching right now. And Crampy still couldn't get past Dazaster, so Crampy is stuck. And I don't think we're gonna see a championship clinch as Carbon Racer gets a 3 second penalty. Maybe I just jinx him with that sentence. But uh, yeah, Crampy needs to get a move on if he wants to gain something here. Carbon Racer with that 3 second penalty, that's a big impact. Especially with these train looking, they're really close. If this train is going to be really close until the end of this race, that 3 second penalty is going to be the doom of him. But Crampy is still stuck behind Disaster. He needs to get a move on if he wants to score some points for the championship and even win the championship today. Yeah, as Artex is really close to this now, I think he's going to get that overtake pretty simply done. Artex going for the move against Wisp is right behind this. Retiring, he almost sideswiped Wisp. Is he gonna dive it in? He doesn't have any battery left. These drivers are looking really close. They need to back off a little bit before something happens. And this is just allowing Pookie just to get off. Wisp is outside of the DRS range, as well as Pookie is almost out of the DRS range, but he's slowly catching back. Yeah, as as Camp is still stuck behind Lazasta and can't do anything with that pesky off Romeo. As Jean and Kanai go side by side, and Jean throws it the, around the outside of Kanai, and I think makes the move here. A little um, bit of contact there, did. but still looking good. Jean is still with those medium runners, but Crampy needs to get a move on. He has those new medium tires, and if he doesn't perform between the, the hard tire, he's just gonna destroy his tires, and I don't know. He needs to do something. There's a little bit of battle with Wisp goes in front of Artex. What a beautiful move. They're still going side by side to those tight corners. Is there enough space left? There's a little bit of touch of touch there. There's still a lot of contact. They're still going side by side. Wisp uh, getting a P4, but he, is he going to get that DRS? Yeah, I think he does. And he maybe left Artex go through on purpose because he's going to get the DRS now. And Artex doesn't have a lot of battery to defend. And Wisp is going for the overtake again. And Carbon Racer is just looking these two battling and laughing like Come on, guys. He's going for Get the inside on. line. What a risky move from oh, from Wisp there. They're going side by side. There was barely no space left but left in the inside line, but Wisp decided to, to go on the grass. There's a yellow sector for Disaster, and Disaster has spun off. And Carboris is going to make a move for Artex, and she tried to send it down the outside, but Artex breaks later than the Mercedes, and still holds back at the moment. Wow, what a battling at the moment. As even looking up Carbon Racers inside, but no one is letting an inch to the other person as Maka and Kuki running away with this four seconds to get to this now. And this is definitely for his drive. Crampy is set free from disaster hard run, but he's still stuck behind uh, Ratley with another hard runner. Maybe he can go for the overtake here. Both going uh, with the DRS. Is he gonna go for the dive? He is gonna go for the dive going side by side with Rackety. Is it gonna be a switchback? There's a little tap from Gion, a little bit of contact. But Crampy goes for the move and he does that well. He's right behind his teammate. He's back in the train and he's gonna, if he stays in his position, he might score points. But Carbon Racer is still. And so it's almost points. And Wisp, he's gonna let you ooh, Mr. Carbon Racer, is either you're gonna take the opportunity and uh, go for the overtake. What's happening here? Everyone's going side by side. Carbon Racer is going to go for a move on Artex as this and. 
Oh no, I didn't expect that. Oh, oh, we almost head. take Swiss Mouse. There's so much contact going on with Crampy. Crampy is running from her seats. Rackety is going side by side with Crampy. I didn't notice that. Rackety pulled out of nowhere and almost uh, over. And Chad is looking up. Rackety is outside as well for turn four. What's happening? There's this mid pack is crazy. There's so much racing going on with these rivals. The gaps are so close. You never know what's going to happen. I can't follow through. My voice is going out of my body right now. Yes, Apex breaks so much later than Carbon Racer that he managed to get back that position, but Carbon Racer has now DRS. Crappy is, is going to go for the overtake against EDU. Probably some team orders there. He's not going to use any of that. He's going to let him through because he knows the championship title is for is there right here is gonna assist his teammate rackety going for the overtake against his teammate they're going side by side the hoss drivers getting to, getting uh, touchy touchy there dude there, there's a lot of contact between these mid-pack drivers and that almost running in the back of his teammate and so, we have a speed from Dazaster again and Ido diving into the pit lane he might have some damage we got some damage from the contact from Wisp but that's unfortunate for him Dark overtaking his teammate right now. There's, um, uh, as well as Carbon is four tenths behind the Artex, as well as the gap between, uh, he's outside of the, the range of Wisp. Wisp doesn't have DRS against Carbon. <sighs> this is just so much racing, I can't think right now. I'm out of words right now. At the moment, Krampi is in championship winning position because of Carbon's penalty. But Carbon is going to try to use Artex to his advantage and maybe pull away from this little group. Rackety, they're going side by side to the corner. Rackety went for the move, but there was no space left for him. He was entitled to no space, and he tried to go for the move, but Kanae did not give him that much space. And Kemp is looking this rear wing now, and he gets the DS and he's using the battery, and it was defensive. And this that seemed true, actually. He was not fighting that on those hard tires. Or maybe he let him through so he can get DRS in the next, um, the next, uh, next DRS trade, but. Wisp is definitely in the good, is in a prime, he was in a prime move to be P1, but the hard tires and his performance and his battling with all these other drivers is so much to manage for this driver. Yeah, and it's almost out of the DRS range as well. Yeah, can't even just to get uh, DRS from, from Carbon Racer. There's four tens that separates P1 and P2 right now. We used to see the gap, it used to be almost uh, nine tens, mm -hmm. almost outside the DRS range. But now these drivers are slowly, slowly creeping up, and Maka needs to start, uh, needs to start managing a little bit because he has Pookie right behind him. You have Carbon Racer yeah. behind Artex. Uh, he's only three tenths, and he can most likely overtake if he utilizes his body correctly. Artex is in the fourteen percent uh, ERS, so he needs to, he needs to, he needs to take the factor of uh, battery management. As, I'm going out of breath. There's so much to unfold in these last uh, dying laps of this race. Yeah, Scampi still managed to get DRS, and it's really bad for Carbon Racer, who needs to get out of the DRS range so he can pull a 3 seconds gap at the moment. The championship is literally going to be decided on, on this here now. We had a yellow flag for EDU, I believe. Maybe we've gone off track, but. We're back to racing now. Gian is so close to Wisp. There's only three times separating them, and it's most likely Crampy gets a three second time penalty. And that's, oh my god, that's definitely gonna affect this race. Carbon Racer still have a chance to get some points here. If if this train is still packed together, Crampy's gonna lose so many positions due to that penalty. As Carbon Racer dies up so the inside of Artex, and they are banging all over the wheels, but they managed to get away with it so far. And now Crampy has to overtake Carbon Racer, I think. No, a Krampi is still in championship in the Oh! And Rackety and Sid, he's killed Sid! Sid is off the track, he hasn't killed him yet. But there was he was literally side I mean, he was 90 degrees against the track. Oh my god, it's always unfortunate for Sid and Rackety. But we're still back into some more racing with Carbon Racer and Krampi right now. As well as Dark being so close to Wisp, is he gonna overtake in this DRS zone? He retires into the pit lane. Did he retires in the pit lane? Yeah, there's not much he can do there. Uh, did he go for the fastest lap, or because uh, I see him pit for the for the soft tires? No, Krampi has the fastest lap at the moment, but Krampi is eyeing up on a move on his championship rival, Carbon Racer. He wants to get it done on this race. I think he wants to get it done on this straight. 
it does have 25 percent as well as uh they're both an equal percentage carbon rates are having a little bit more Crampy's not going to utilize that battery so much Carb carbon did a little bit but he's eyeing up a move against artex he's really close behind them he needs to make some moves or else Artex is just going to slow Carbon Racer down because the medium uh, medium tires are slowly dying off. Car Crampy is in those new tires as well as uh, Artex is in the, uh, the hard so he's definitely a bit faster than Carbon Racer right now. But yeah, it's, it's, it's. Maka is still in front of Puki. There's only five laps left. So I just see the race is unfolding and folding. Puki looking a bit shaky there. Disaster going for the fastest lap uh, of the race. Sid pitting for those uh, for another set of mediums. Interestingly, we have a yellow flag for Gian. That's John. Hopefully not disturbing any other drivers. Almost clipped back row. They're making him go off track. That's unfortunate. He couldn't do anything there, but we're still back in some more racing. The midfield is still keeping close packed together. Pookie is hopefully. We need to overtake Makasu. Maka has four left old tires. Will it last to the end of the race? Uh, we just have to see if we have seven laps still to the end. It's actually just turn to six, but it's a lot of laps yet. The collaboration is again trying to get the overtake done on Artex, and he's now really close. But I think he's not going to be close enough, and he used a lot of batteries, so he needs to do something. Artex was enough. literally 0% of ERS. They all fighting for that prime position. Crampy is out of the DRS range. He's he actually made a mistake. He made a huge mistake, which will cost him so many positions as he has three second time penalty. It's actually going to be P7 at the moment if he can pull a little bit more. Or gap. He, he is gonna hit, oh, we have a migrating host. As Crampy, Crampy has unfortunately, I think he's on AI mode right now. Yeah, Crampy disconnected. I'm gonna try oh, to get no. him back as we need to get Crampy as back as soon as possible. I'll, I'll send him an invite as well, but this yeah, is I'm not looking invite. good for him. I already sent him an uh, invite. Oh no, this is not what he needed. He needed his computer to work and in the dying stages he... Ah, oh, that's definitely gonna cost him some time as Dark is already back against him. Try and steer to moment. Yeah, actually. Lobbies just can't hold up the whole race, but... So far we have the whole timing board. Right, so I think we are fine so far. Everything is looking correct so far as Crampy has been overtaken by so many drivers. He is in P8 right now. Uh, the intervals has been resetted, but there's still it's still looking good for me to for me right now. Yeah, for me as well. It's looking fine. Carbon Racer is happy, so he can finally put some less stress. Um, he and especially as well, he is P4. If he if he stays P4. Um, he is definitely has a 5 second gap to, uh, behind him with the P5, so he can still stay in P4 and bring a good amount of points. Oh, as well as something I did not notice, Maka, uh, Puki has actually overtaken Maka. So, it looks like Puki has the, the provisional win right now if Maka doesn't do anything, or if Puki makes such huge mistakes. Yeah, and uh, I think Trump is back already in, the, in, in his seat. But those full up order tires are not not holding up so far for Maka, but Mercy is actually gaining huge points here with the 2-4 finish at the moment, so... And um, there's no intervals between P2, P3, P4, but Carbon Racer is really close behind Artex. Hopefully might That's go for the guess. overtake overtake this lap. Puki goes for the fastest uh, lap of the race with those meme tires. Impressive lap by him. Didn't get a good exit, yeah. but yeah. We are getting back those intervals now, so everything is fine. The whole host migrated, thankfully. Yeah, it's it's a huge hit for Crampy, but uh, nothing that he can take away from, I think. He's definitely, I don't believe he will win the championship in this race, but there's still four races left in the championship. He needs to perform uh, in these last, in these races, because Carbon Racer, he's putting a pretty good performance, spinning out in lap one. And coming back fighting for that P4 position. And if he could have raced more, he probably could have got that podium position. But he had, with those penalties, I don't think it was possible unless Artex makes a huge mistake. Or picks up a penalty and gets overtaken by him. But Artex is so far. He has two warnings actually, so he's not that far from it. We're, we are on the last three laps of the race. Maka is still keeping tucked behind Pookie. 
uh, Baiki is on 20% ERS while Pookie is on 40% ERS. There is some ERS advantage. Um, this is really close. Maka, you know, Maka, if if he keeps on consistency, he's actually eyeing up a move. He's three tenths behind. Oh, it's just a three second time penalty! Yeah, as that means that the Calmonacer might get P3 even if he plays his cards right. But to cut you off okay. there, Maka overtook Pookie and he's in the lead right now. Oh I think my that's what god. Pookie wanted at the moment because he wants the DRS in the last two laps because he wants to overtake and Maka is blinking so he, he knows Maka doesn't have battery left. He doesn't have battery left and he's definitely gonna wait for that DRS zone. But Maka needs to pull out as much gap as possible. He needs to get as much time because he's fighting for the win right now. We have a yellow sector for Gian again spinning out. No drivers uh, behind him so he can swiftly come back to the track. But these gaps. The dying uh, last uh, lap of races, we have Kanae Given right behind Wisp, having a 4 tenth gap, as well as Carbon Racer behind Artex. Artex, uh, Carbon Racer can still have the pony position if he wants to. If he can get a good yeah. exit behind Sector 3 and get, uh, and get a nice run in the DRS rate, the pony positions are still available for these mercs. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a mind game, I think, from here. When do you overtake? When do you use your last chance? Because you want to be ahead on lap 33 and not 32, so... You know, I think there is going to be an exchange for P1 here because Pook is really close to Maka and Maka is not using anything. There is going to be an easy overtake for for. Artex, just another three second penalty. Carbon Racer moves up to the podium position. That's six seconds for the young Spaniard. He must be disappointed. And Carbon Racer goes through almost. He tries, but he backs out. He doesn't. He don't need to do anything stupid now. He just need to keep the position. He knows Artex has uh, penalties here. Wisp and Kanae given going side by side. Kanae going in front of Wisp right now. Carbon needs to play it safe if he wants his podium position and extend his lead through the uh, through the constructor championship as well as the driver championship. Crampy is still in PA with that three second time penalty, so he's definitely not, not going to sure. get any good points. I'm not sure about Artex penalties because it seems that he got double penalties in two times because he has two pa penalty plus two warnings in the last two laps. And the Carbon Racer is on 5 warnings as well, so he's pretty close to a penalty. Well, the drivers to look at right now is Mac and Pookie. We're going to the last uh, last laps of this race. Pookie played his smart, uh, growing his ERS battery to 50%, while Mac is on that 30% ERS. So Ma Pookie definitely has a, um, a, a, an advantage right now with the DRS ERS. He needs to get that good exit off of turn 3. Activating ERS, gonna use everything he has. Mac as well, using everything he has. He's flashing lights on right now. Looks like it's gonna be an easy pass for Pookie, but is Maka gonna fight? He's gonna squeeze him a lot. He's gonna stand a little bit. He touched him a little bit. They're going side by side through the corner. Who gets the better exit speed? But there's space left. They're still going side by side. Maka needs to go in front of him if he wants to keep this P1 position. But looks like Pookie is gonna keep, uh, be in front of him. And this is crucial for Pookie right now. This, if he keeps his position, he's definitely gonna be in the leads. As well as Pookie Carbon Racer is retired right now side by side. If the if the born if the penalty can be removed, Carbon Racer needs to overtake him fast as possible. Oh, and I am running out of breath right now. Sid just out of nowhere is stopped on track, and I, I can't I can't speak right now. I'm speechless. My chest is hurting. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Carbon Racer is going to try to dive here, but it's no pain because he has the penalty. He knows the penalty situation. He don't need to do anything stupid. As Maka couldn't do anything to fight back on the second straight. So Pookie is going to come home, I think, on the P1. He perfected the strategy game on his mind, using enough battery everywhere. And Pookie is rounding the final corner and going to take a win in Spain, Catalonia. And what a race by this Ferrari. And Maka came on P2. Arte is going to take P3 on track, but Carbonisa is going to jump him on penalties. And uh, yeah. This is, what? this is the performance that Mercedes need. Pookie getting that P1 position. That what an amazing drive for him. There was so he had, he was looking really good for qualifying and he's looking really good for this race. He's played his strategy perfect and Maka he played it really nicely, but Pookie played it smart, grew uh, uh, harvested his ERS battery and pulled it through in the last laps. Unfortunate for Crampy with his computer uh, dying out with a disconnect as well. Uh, making his AI drive and going to the PA position position so unfortunately he did not 
clinch the uh, the title championship, but there's still four races left, and we've seen it's in the past with the consistency. It's better for us because a championship decider is getting far and far away now. Well, or like, actually, Carbon Racer gaining on points, but it's still not over. Actually, we have three races left from now on because it was with this run. But uh, yeah, for a race by these racers, I think I'm gonna look for some interviews by you round up the race for me. Drive today, go to Carbon Racer, no surprise with that. He spun off lap one and he came back fighting and he got that podium position uh, provisionally. We will see with the warnings of Artex might be removed, but for now, he is in the top, uh, he is in the podium position. Top step of that is uh, Pookie in the Ferrari. What, a, what an amazing race with him. So it looks like Pookie, uh, P1 and P2, P3, driving for both Mercedes, is uh, Maka and Carbon Racer. We have Artex with the 6 second penalty, might be removed, uh, reduced down to 3 seconds. We have Artex in the Red Bull, the Spaniard driver, uh, getting good set points if for his home race. So home advantage, definitely there. We have Dark, uh, P5 with the Haas, he had good battles there. We have P6, Wisp, really good since he started in P11. We have Kane given uh, P7, mm -hmm. Batgirl and P8, good performance for him since he started uh, P15. P9 for Crampy, unfortunate for him, didn't get any points. Uh, most likely didn't get any, uh, a lot of points for that. And um, didn't get enough time to see the the other, the rest, uh, of, the the rest of the grid. Yeah, and I am completely gone. What a race. I enjoyed that th uh, throughout the whole race. There was non-stop action. This is what you get when you watch MRL. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take interviews for you, Dan. And uh, I think we already have some uh, people in our commentary booth. And we have our, uh, oh no, I dragged the wrong Mercedes actually. So we have our P3 finisher with us, it's Carbon Racer. Um, Carbon, tell us how you fight on the race. You had a pretty rough start, but then you fought back pretty bravely and you had a good pace all over the weekend. And most importantly, you kept the championship fight one more race. So tell me about your race and how you feel. Uh, that was so unexpected. Like I was really disappointed qualifying P9. I could have done so much better. And then I get tagged and spun, and I, I was just running last, and I was just hoping for something good to happen. And when that safety car came out, I knew that we were right back in it for some good points. Yeah, you did a really good job recovering after that spin on lap one. Uh, actually, can you tell us what happened? Because we just noticed you just dropping down the order. Yeah, at turn four, I was on the inside of, I think, one of the Alfa Romeos, and they went for a move down the inside of someone else, and I was alongside them. They moved over, tagged my front, and spun my car around. Oh, yeah, so that's pretty lucky then that you got the safety car and you managed to fight back, and you had some brave, brave moves and, and, and uh, good fights with the other drivers. And uh, how are you looking for Austria? Well, I'm looking quite good, hoping to close the gap a bit more and keep the championship going still. I, that's what we want to hear and that's what we want to see because you want to want that thrilling championship decider in the last race so we are hoping you get everything and uh, yeah just anything to ask to that cycle uh no you had a really good performance i was unfortunate with the lap one but you fought back and i'm just proud to see our mercedes boys moving up the ranks and um definitely gonna have to work hard for the austria so we'll see you next race carbon see you later yeah, yeah thank you. you so now we're going to talk with our other Mercedes driver who fought to the really end with uh, with the Ferrari of Pookie and almost got the win, but uh, unfortunately I didn't manage it. But what a thrilling battle for that P1 in the last few laps! And uh, tell us about your race, Maka. How was how was your start? How did you feel leading the race and then losing in the final moments? And just tell us everything. Yeah, it was a very hard race. Um... Uh, I pit uh, lap 11, which is quite later than everyone else, and then I got P1 off the safety car, which kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't, wasn't expecting that, and then I was kind of hoping that Wisp could hold up uh, Pookie for a bit longer, but he got past pretty quick, and, and then he was just sitting in my DRS, so I was, I was burning all, all of my DRS, but yeah, I, 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 I thought it, it might happen, but it's annoying, but yeah, it was a very good battle. Yeah, you did a very good job, uh, and uh, yeah, I was thought you were a little bit out of the race after that late pit stop, but uh, the safety car kind of came in clutch for you, and then you worked your way up uh, on Wisp and 
just put away from everybody. Oh, yeah, actually, you let them down. I'm sorry. So you actually did a really good job. And yeah, it just was unfortunate that there are difference at the end. Anything else to add, Psycho? Yeah, I just want to ask, how was it How was it, uh, to manage your tires? You were Your tires were pretty old in those dying stages. And safety car kind of helped you with uh, staying out for so long. Kind of helped you with the tire wear. But how was tiring uh, man uh, tire management? Uh, yeah, um, I was looking at that quite a lot through the race, but um, I was a bit surprised when everyone pit again. Some people went to hards. I I definitely thought I could get to the end on the on the mediums I was on, but um, yeah, I, I I just managed to keep it, and it, it was pretty bad towards the end, but you know that's what made the difference. So. That's yeah. all good to hear. Um, definitely good to see my Mercedes boys getting the good points and those constructor championships. Uh, yeah. It's making me proud to look at. So we'll see you for the next race in Austria. I know you'll do me good. So see you next time. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Hey, congratulations. So we're going to have our last uh, interview for today. Who we'll finished P1, and I'm going to let Psycho uh, take this one from me because I talked already too much. So take away, Psycho. That's all good. Welcome, Fuki, to the car, to the commentary booth. A mid-season driver joining in mid uh, mid-season, and you've shown. So much pace, so much consistency. Talk me through this race. Uh, well, it was an awesome race. I really had much fun. Um, at the beginning, I think I had quite a good pace. I stayed with Artex, Grampy. I don't know if it was Grampy, like with some guys at the front. Um, and the safety car, I thought it it fucked me because we were really in front and like in our four group, six second in front or something like that, I think. But it actually gained me some places because I stayed out a lap because I thought, okay, I'll finish it on the hearts. Um, so I actually jumped Crumpy and Artex, I think it was. And after the safety car restart on the mediums, I was just faster than Wisp and Artex. And Maka and me just pulled away while all the others were fighting. I think by lap 24, we were five and a half seconds away. It was just, I think the podium was quite clear then, at least the top two steps. And the fight with Maka at the end was really great. I think I overtook him on lap 29 or so. And I thought, all right, I have 80% ERS. He has almost none, so I can just pull away. But I made some mistakes and realized that I, I would lose if I stay in front. And he has the DRS all the time. So I let him by. Had some nice fights until the end and got the place back. Yeah, there was some really good racing and there was some beautiful strategy. Beautiful strategy with you, um, saving your battery so you can push out on the last lap. That was a clever move from you. Well, how do you look uh, for the next race in Austria? Have you had any ex past experiences? Well, to be honest, I mean, I've raced some seasons now in other leagues as well, but like I've, I feel like I've, I skipped almost every Austrian league race. I, I know if I ever driven there were league race, so it, it will be exciting. <laughs> it will definitely be, and we can't wait to see how you will perform. Uh, on the next race, uh, Domi, anything to cap off this interview? Honestly, uh, we heard everything and yeah, you just had a, an amazing race and, and good battles and, and just pure pace. So hope you hope we see you next time around here in the commentary booth again. Thanks a lot and nice commentating. Listen to it on my second monitor. It, it, it sounded great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you kept us with, uh, you gave us a lot of action for us to commentate. So thank you for the racing today and we'll see you next time. Yeah, see ya. And that's it for the interviews. Uh, action full of uh, pack action full of uh, racing today. And the racing is not over yet. We still have America Tier 1 today. Uh, that's definitely going to be an interesting Oops. race to watch. Anything else to uh, commentate before we're done with this, uh, with this race, Toby? No, I think that was all. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of race, so stay around to watch our next driver who is going to be MVP Kieran so see you guys around next time see you guys thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time bye bye